Welcome back to a cold garage here in the UK and damp I must add and uh, welcome back to Alcomoto's garage for part two of series three of the sports to tank painting series or custom tank painting series I will add. Now it's actually the fourth tank we've done in Alcomoto's garage uh, but this is the third on the Sportster, the Harley series. The last was the CB400 uh, Honda tank we did for uh, Shep a while back. So this is uh, the third Sportster tank we're doing here. So of course, if you watched the last episode, we did the prep of the bare steel tanks ready for the uh, primer filler, which is what you can see here. The rest of the panels are on the shelf behind you. But for now we're just going to concentrate on the tank because that's where the majority of the work is going to be so we're just going to go over and show you guys how to find those imperfections because it's hard to see on a, on a panel like that uh, how to bring those out and make sure that that is absolutely glass flat before we lay on the base coat something you should do uh, in your home garage if you're attempting this yourself so follow me uh, through this series and let's get cracking for part two and let's show you how to prep this tank ready for base coats after the intro. Okay, so looking at this tank now from your perspective and even from just being around it from my perspective, everything looks absolutely fine. But on closer inspection, I can still feel a few low spots and things where this tank was made. Now remember, it's a remanufactured tank and there is some imperfections in it that we need to get out uh, before we do put paint on. Because otherwise, what we want is that glass finish. And if you look down it, if it wasn't right, you'd have a ripple in that. So we need to get them absolutely flat out. So the easiest way to do this, and we have done this in previous videos as well, is just to use basic tin of satin black paint or any contrasting colour. Okay. And all we're going to do is just dust over the tank. Okay, just like so. So we'll just leave that to go off for a couple of minutes. Okay, so the usual thing is little painter and decorators bucket that I use, nice and handy, little two litre bucket. Warm soapy water, look at the breath coming out of me, it's cold in here. And 800s wet and dry. And then basically, all we're doing is just lightly sanding over the tank. And then once you do this all over, it'll just reveal the low spots, which will stay black, obviously, against the white background. Okay, so we'll carry on, fast forward a little bit, and then uh, show you what the results are. Okay, so what you're looking for is a uniform finish back, all white, all over. So with that first pass, you can see how we've got some of the darker bits, so it just shows you. Now you can machine do this with a sander, but I prefer doing it by hand, it's just more of a feel over the curves of the tank. So 
when all these darker bits are at the lower spots in the paint, okay? So we've flat down before, it just shows you that we're uneven in certain areas. So you wanna go over again until all of this has disappeared. And then if you're left with any more, now I can tell on this side, I won't show you that, but then on here, we've got some darker spots, which is the ones that I was showing you before, here and here, and one on the other side. But these are just slight indentations in the way the tank's been formed, so these will probably have to be filled out. You can probably feel them just by rubbing your hands over as well. But we're going to take this down a little bit more, and if that's what we're left with, then we'll just apply a little bit of stopper on there just to build that back up. So let's go ahead. Okay, so after flattening down the second time, and you can probably just see now in that light the two areas of concern. You can see where I had the... Uh, etch primer underneath the white and then the white on top and then we had the black overlay which we just sanded off so taking that down we took the low spot down but as you can see as the paint's gone thinner it's revealing the etch primer underneath the white and you can see this dot here which is an indentation and then this one here so that's an area of concern and then on the other side of the tank we've got another one similar to this and I think it's just the manufacturing process of the tank and then the welding and where it's just pulled in slightly there. So this is why it's important because as much as you think it's okay, it's not okay. So if you spent, you know, hours and hours and hours of prep and not doing this bit here to reveal your low spots and you think it's okay, you go ahead and put your expensive paint on or your layers, your airbrush and your candies and things like that or whatever you're going to use. And then in the light, you're going to have this imperfection coming through on the top even the smallest and what happens is over time then the paint will settle down so make sure you get rid of every imperfection and you can just see here slight low spots we've got a little bit more flat enough to do on here and then around here okay but these are the only two areas of concern the rest is irrelevant that would cover over with the uh, different coats of paint on top you know, with your base layers and what have you, and when you flatten them down, they will take these tiny bits out. But your area of concern is these two. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put a little bit of filler on that. And I always use a metal filler, so we'll go ahead and mix some now and then put that on. You can use any you like, but I prefer to use this metal filler. It's very, very smooth and easy to sand. Okay. And then from this area here, we need to be coming over there like so. Okay, as easy as that. So we'll just let that go off and then we've got a fan for sand. We'll start here as easy as that so we'll let that go off now and then sand that down and then that should be it and then one last final coat of primer and then it's ready for its base coat okay so where we last left off we put the white coat over which is a high build primer and we flattered that down nice and smooth and what that did is it revealed some imperfections in the tank which you can see here and on the other side and then some at the very front as well so we'll explain to you what we've had to do there and what we're going to do to cover those over so we make sure that the whole tank is absolutely perfect then for laying on the base coats now because it's a reproduction tank and it's brand spanking new don't presume that it's perfect just to lay the paint over straight away because as you can see it showed these little detents in here on the other side and quite a few detents in here where the tank's been welded and fabricated together, just a few pulls in around the weld. So we'll, we'll show you those a little bit closer. 
Okay, and as you can see just down there, that's the latest project we've had in, uh, Project Custom Kitty Bike. We've had to put that together and modify that, ready for the new customer, so we'll be picking that up shortly. But anyway, so as you can see here, this is where we had a few of the indents. You can see where we laid the uh, black dust coat on and sanded that down, flattered that down to uh, show any of the detents in the tank, uh, which showed here and here, a little bit of grey where the fill is covered. And uh, this is nice and flat. And on the front as well, over here, there was quite a lot of little detents in here, which we've tucked down now. And you can see the filler under here, which we've sanded down around the weld joint here. And then right underneath here, you can see how much work we've had to do to get these out here. So never presume that it's perfect because these did show in the uh, white base coat and they certainly would have shown through the top coats and their uh, clear coats when the tank was finished. So we're just gonna lay a little bit of primer over the whole of this now and then reflat down again. And as usual again, before you put any paint on, a little bit of panel wipe. Make sure you get all of that dust and any grease and oil that's been on your fingers out of that paint. Okay, so basically now you can see the tank. We've got the gray, the gray primer, which has gone over the white uh, high build primer. We took all the indentations out of the new tank and we've spent about a good four hours now just prepping that tank so it's good enough to lay some uh, base color on. So there was a little bit around the back edges where we've explained where the weld was pulled and two around the top outsides which we've now got absolutely glass flat. So we've got the front chin spoiler and the front fairing here which we're just going to lay a little bit of uh, silver base coat over and the reason why we're going to use a light base uh, we are going to mix some dark and some black over that but we'll explain more of that in a bit. So let's just bring you closer and show you what we've done so far. Okay, so you can see this grey primer now has been flattered down and there's actually a sheen on it there. You can see where the light's hitting it and that's how you know it's absolutely glass flat. So it's as smooth as. Now we've prepped that down as well with some panel wipe and we had some pulls around here and a couple of pulls around here which now are completely out. So I'm quite happy now that that tank is perfect for laying on the base coat. So for that, we're just going to use, I only use one of my cheaper little uh, mini guns just for laying this over because it's going to be flattered down anyway. Uh, what we're using is a, from Custom Paints, a base metallic silver course. And as you can see there, it says mix two to one with D thinner, which is here. So that's what we've used. So we've mixed this silver in with that now and we're just going to blow that over these three panels. We're not too worried about the fenders you can see over on the shelf over there, and we've got the side panels to do as well. Uh, we'll worry about them again. Uh, the main thing is I want to get the base coats here so we can lay the pattern, and that is going to sort of establish what's going to happen with this to flow through to the tank and then flow through to the fenders. So once I'm happy with the design on these two and the chin spoiler, not too worried about that, but while we've got a small item there, we might as well put the base colour on that. So with this gun, we'll be using around 26 PSI. That's all you need. So with quite a wide fan, uh, you want it a nice even coat with it being a metallic. So 26 PSI, no higher than that. Um, push for 30 in my other gun that I use, but again, sprays a little bit uh, erratic. So around 26, 28 PSI.
go folks that brings us to the end of this episode on the custom tank painting series so i hope you've enjoyed that so like i said it's just a little instruction on how to get that tank prepped ready for your base coat and as you can see now we've got that in a fantastic silver glittery base now the next ones get more interesting than this because what we're going to do is just find out where we're going to put the line patterns uh, where we're going to do the uh, airbrushing work and put the overlays on with the different colours before the candies go on top. So we're going to do about three different colours underneath before the candy goes on top of that and then it'll sort of create an overlay effect. So like I said, it'll get more interesting from, from then on. But we're going to concentrate on the tank first before we move on to the fenders and everything else. Uh, so we'll do the tank and the fairing, chin spoil, and then move on to the fenders last. Uh, but that'll sort of roll into next year now. So, But apart from that, I hope you guys have a great Christmas and uh, I'll be seeing you in the new year now because I've got a wedding to attend. Yes, me and Mrs. Alcamoto, or should I say Miss Alcamoto was, uh, will soon to be Mr. and Mrs. Alcamoto. I've got a new year wedding, guys, and I've got that to look forward to and prep that before we move back into the Alcamoto workshop and the rest of the channel uh, for next year. So until then, folks, thanks for watching. And remember, if this is the first time watching, look back in the back catalogue. Please subscribe to Alcamoto, and I will see you in the new year. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you later.